magnificent. To compose something so majestic, one could die happy. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 underrated horror movie sequels. Run! Run, sister, run! I jumped. Scared me. For this list, we'll be looking at spooky sequels that didn't get their due first time around. We'll only be including direct sequels on this list, no reboots or remakes here, and there may be some spoilers. So consider this your spoiler alert. So, is there an unloved sequel you watch every Halloween? Let us know in the comments. Now, on to the top 10. Number 10, Final Destination 5. We all gotta get off. What are you talking about? The bridge is gonna collapse. What? We're all gonna die. What the hell is going on? We're all gonna die if we don't get off this bridge what? now! As the series wears on into its fourth and fifth installments, the chance of it turning into a pure cash cow increases, and the size of its audience usually trails off as a result. But for those who stick around, there are often all kinds of Easter eggs and callbacks to be found as the later parts pay homage to those that came before. Death. doesn't like to be cheated. Final Destination 5 is a perfect example of this. Working in a healthy amount of fan service to its latest tale of doomed teens and their quest to cheat death, making it a hugely rewarding watch for day one fans. With some hugely impressive visual effects to boot, Final Destination 5 is one of the series' true high points. Death's after you too. This is crazy, Peter. Number nine, The Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2. Despite its title, the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre plays things pretty subtle for the most part. The cannibalistic Sawyer family isn't properly introduced until fairly far into the movie, and most of the horror comes from a general sense of offness rather than any actual massacring. The sequel is far less interested in subtlety. You know why I'm here. Yes, there's something about chainsaw killers, your brother's kids killed. It kicks off with Leatherface chainsawing his way through a hapless victim and never looks back, ramping up a full-blown chainsaw duel. Bigger, bolder, and a whole lot sillier than the original, it might not be a better film exactly, but it is a whole lot of fun. Run, sister, run! Number 8, Alien Covenant. I can't think of any other way to say it than to, to say it, but we, we have suffered a... Um, monumental tragedy. While the first two Alien movies are widely accepted as genre classics, just about every subsequent sequel has undergone an endless cycle of rejection and reappraisal, with different fans and critics stumping for different entries. 2017's Alien Covenant was no exception, continuing Prometheus's quest to discover the true origins of mankind. Magnificent. To compose something so majestic, one could die happy. Boasting another hypnotic performance from Michael Fassbender as the android David, Covenant underperformed at the box office and was met with a reasonably lukewarm critical response. But since then, many have found themselves falling for its strange charms, and it's worth looking up for the homoerotic flute playing alone. Bravo! You have symphonies in you, brother. Number 7, Friday the 13th, The Final Chapter. I don't want to scare anyone, but I'm going to give it to you straight about Jason. His body was never recovered from the lake after he drowned. The disadvantage of letting a horror series run on forever is that we never truly get a satisfying ending. Knowing that the bad guy will be back to terrorize a new set of scantily clad youths in a few years, no matter how dead he appears to be when the credits roll. But the man that killed your sister is dead. He's alive. So this final chapter deserves props for doing its best to live up to its name, offering a genuine conclusion to the tale of Jason Voorhees in which the machete-wielding boogeyman finally returns to Crystal Lake for a new slasher spree and finally meets his match. Before long, he'd be dragged back up to sell more movie tickets, but for one satisfying moment, it looked like this really might be the end. Number six, 28 weeks later. We were chasing you. My mom, my dad, they're trying to kill me. Appropriately, the popularity of zombies never seems to quite die. They just keep coming back, 
often in a slightly different form. 28 Days Later was part of the modern zombie wave, which usually favors grittier, more grounded tales over splatterhouse excess, giving more focus to the hideous moral decisions characters are forced to make than the elaborate ways they find of re-killing their newly risen foes. I see them. Biting. I couldn't do it. While the first film centered on a handful of average people trying to survive in the intermediate aftermath of a zombie pandemic, the sequel zooms forward a few months to follow a highly trained NATO squadron as they try to reclaim a safe zone in the middle of London. This more action-oriented follow-up is a worthy successor to the original. If it comes back, we kill it. Number 5. Creep 2 the Creep series is another example of an understated atmospheric horror film that gets to let loose when it comes time for the sequel. With Mark Duplass playing against type as a serial killer who lures videographers to their death, Creep puts a clever spin on the found footage format. Watching a predator lead their prey to their doom is all the more chilling when you're looking through the eyes of the victim. You, you need to call the police. This is serious. No. Throw in one of the most complex and compelling deaths in recent horror history, and Creep has more than enough mileage for a second installment. Without a theatrical release, it never gained as much attention as it should have, even though it currently boasts a perfect 100% on Rotten Tomatoes. He is highly unpredictable and potentially dangerous. Number 4. Psycho 3. And the dead don't come back. You came back. The original Psycho is one of the most famous films in cinema history, so it would be easy to write off the sequels as cash-ins designed to trade on its good name, especially when they arrive a quarter of a century after the first movie. Directed by Anthony Perkins, who also stars, Psycho 3 manages to breathe new life into the Bates Motel by leaning into its darkly comic undertones. Jeez, you about scared the piss out of me. Add in a depressed nun, a mysterious drifter, and an intrepid reporter, and Psycho 3 has all the ingredients to serve up a wickedly funny addition to the series while still providing the shocks and scares you would expect. Naturally, it can't compare to the original, but Psycho 3 still has plenty to recommend it. They're gonna have you locked up forever. But I'll be free. I'll finally be free. Number 3. Scream 4. Hello? Who is this? It's Trudy. Who's this? This is the last person you're ever gonna see alive. The Scream series revolutionized horror by featuring characters who had grown up on slasher flicks, allowing them to call out all the cliches and tropes as they encountered them in their own stories. By its fourth installment, though, it threatened to turn into everything it was designed to make fun of, a by-the-numbers franchise that used the same tricks again and again to keep churning out sequels. Well, I read somewhere once, just when you think things can't get any worse, sometimes they don't. Sometimes they get better. So naturally, this franchise exhaustion became the target of the fourth movie as it skewered the genre's tendency to devolve into repetition and mindless torture. It turned out the Scream series was still sharp as ever. It just needed to find a worthy target. I jumped. It scared me. Number 2. Halloween 3 Season of the Witch They're going to kill us. Halloween 3 deserves to be celebrated just for how ambitious it is. Rather than safely retreading old ground and setting Myers loose upon another set of victims, as Halloween 2 had with some success, the third part takes place in a world where the first two installments exist as fictional movies, leaving it free to tell a completely different story. Witchcraft. To us, it was a way of controlling our environment. It's not so different now. It's time again. A story which involves witchcraft, druidism, androids, and all sorts of other crazy, entirely un-Michael Myers-related stuff. It's a true throw-it-at-the-wall-and-see-what-splatters approach to storytelling, and it makes for one of the craziest, most unpredictable horror sequels ever made. Stop it! Stop it! Stop it! Stop it! Stop it! Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few other underrated horror movies that deserve an honorable mention. Paranormal Activity 3 the series dips back into its origins to produce the scariest installment to date. <laughs> Hellbound, Hellraiser 2. 
Between this and Inferno, no series does crazy sequels like Hellraiser. Your suffering will be legendary even in hell. And this is the hell you have created for yourself. Wreck 2, possibly the scariest movie to come out of the Cloverfield found footage boom. Predators. Struggling for a sequel idea? Add more Predators. I'm here, kill me. No. No. Do it now, kill me! Cult of Chucky. Internet voodoo and insane asylum and multiple Chucky dolls make for a wild ride. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. The Exorcist 3 It's a problem that I'm working on, Father. All this bleeding. Having seen his novel adapted into a horror classic and then disappointing sequel, William Peter Blatty returned to set things right by writing and directing the third entry himself. In a particularly devilish turn, he based part of the new story on the Zodiac Killer, a real-life murderer who was said to have enjoyed the original. Are they calling these Gemini killings in the papers? You must get them to do that, Lieutenant. It's important. Ignoring the events of the second film entirely, it picks up 17 years after the first one as Lieutenant William F. Kinderman tries to solve a series of demonic murders. Combining the cold-blooded thrills of a serial killer story with the supernatural scares the Exorcist series made its name with, Blatty created something entirely new and altogether terrifying. I wanted you to see this. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.